Hello everyone, Ladislas Maurice from TheWanderingInvestor.com. So today I'm in Budapest and I'm going to explain why I recently sold one of my apartments here. It wasn't an easy decision. I'm not particularly happy about having sold the apartment, but we're going to go check it out. We're going to have a look at the apartment. I'm going to share all of the numbers, how much rental income I was making, how much I sold it for, and then we're going to have a discussion with my buyer's agent, Benedict, in terms of the types of investments that he's seeing right now and that he's finding for his clients here in Budapest. So right now behind me is the Opera House. So we're in core. This is triple A, a triple A location in Budapest. This street is Andrashi Avenue. It's the equivalent of Fifth Avenue or the Champs Elysees in Paris. So prime, prime, prime. Right behind me, you've got the, the Louis Vuitton store. Like all the big brands are on this street. And my apartment was on the parallel street. So literally a four minute walk away from here. Core Center, let's go check it out. So here we are. So as you can tell, nice shops around. This is the building right here. Beautiful historical building. I mean, uh, like really one of the best neighborhoods in town. So, so central. You've got Deac Perenster, which is the main, main square in Budapest in terms of transport, in terms of everything which is literally a one minute walk away from here. So the most central subway station is right here, like at the end of the street. So in terms of like location, this is triple A plus. And then down there, you've got uh, the Jewish district with a bunch of, with all the partying, the restaurants all there, next street. So this is the best of both worlds. You have access to all the partying and the restaurants but without the noise on a quiet street and close to the, the best street in Budapest. And my apartment was on the first floor. So the uh, tenant is, kind of, my former tenant is kind enough. He's gonna let us into the apartment. All right, let's go. All right, so look at this beautiful entrance. Look at this stunning architecture with uh, security. That was nice. Elevator right here. And just, you know, gorgeous, gorgeous building. This is typical of uh, Budapest buildings. Uh, beautiful courtyard, spacious. Yeah. And then the garbage area was here, which is a plus because it's not in the entrance. Often they're in the entrance. So Benedek is right here. He'll be briefing us in a bit. So let's go up the stairs. And that's what I love about these historical buildings. When you, you walk around, everything is just so, just so, just so solid. You know, it's not like in these new buildings where everything is a little cheap. This is just solid. I mean, these buildings have weathered at least two world wars, <laughs> communism. Um, they're still here in great condition. So it's, you just can't compare that with an, any of the new builds that are being made anywhere in the world. So here is Ulash. Ulash, how are you? Good, so Ulash is my former tenant. So you're on camera, you're gonna be on YouTube. Ulash, how do you feel about that? I, I feel good, am good. I really famous? <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we can uh, walk around? Yeah, of course. 
All right, so this is a Turkish house, so we remove the shoes. <laughs> cool. So yeah, essentially, the apartment. So it was 74 square meters, and I sold it for a bit over uh, 3,000 euros a square meter. So that is 223,000 euros. So living room, you know, needs remodeling. Um, I had done some light remodeling when I bought the apartment in 2016. I had essentially kind of repainted, added some like funky lighting. Um, here the kitchen, I had um, repainted the kitchen, but it's still the old kitchen. I hadn't done anything with the floors and repainted all of this, all the cupboards. So this is the, the first bedroom. Yeah, just did a bit of like repainting essentially. I hadn't changed the floors at all. So this is the first bedroom. I had redone the, so the toilet, I had redone this little toilet and I had redone the bathroom. So it was like pretty, pretty moderate renovations that I had done. Um, and the main bedroom, right here. Oh, that's a nice chair. I didn't buy this. Um, cool. All right. And see, very quiet. You're in like triple A location in Budapest and you do not hear a thing. A little cute coffee shop here. It's just, it's just so nice. Um, so location really 10 out of 10. Now we're going to go into why why I sold this apartment. But before that, Ulesh, so how's, uh, how's the wandering investor as a landlord? Um, perfect, perfect. <laughs> and we've had so many so far because I've been living abroad for the past seven, eight years now. Yeah. He was the best one, so. Cool, 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 That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, and he's, uh, yeah, it went, it went very well. You were also a great, a great tenant. Thank you. <laughs> So I sold this apartment, the 74 square meter apartment for 223,000 euros, including all of the, the furniture really key in hand. The tenants currently are paying 800 euros per month, plus all of the charges. But this was really a, a COVID price. The market price per month would be roughly approximately around 1,000 euros now. Yeah, about 1,000 euros, 950, roughly there. Because interest rates have gone up so much in Hungary, um, they're at over 10% now. If you want to borrow money to buy a house or an apartment, it's over 10%. So essentially, nobody's borrowing anymore. Um, so what this has resulted in is more people being on the long-term rental market. So it's really squeezed rents to the upside. So roughly you'd be looking at a gross yield of five to six percent gross, then you'd have to make some deductions. But there aren't that many in the sense that the common charges, which include water, uh, maintaining the whole building, the elevator, all of that, are approximately 50 euros per month, which is really low for such a, a high quality building. And the property tax uh, because I'm renting, I was renting it out on the long-term market. The municipal tax is a bit less than 400 euros. I had to go pay yesterday because of the, the handover. So really low property tax, uh, low HOA, which the tenant pays. So really all I had to pay was management and I was doing the management myself because I, I know Budapest so well. And whenever I need something done, I have someone who can help and the property tax that's pretty much it and a bit of maintenance in terms of occupancy rates i've had this apartment since 2016 and the occupancy rate was pretty much 100 percent um, i never had an empty month i always had tenants in this apartment due to its central location so now the question is why did i sell it right and it's not like I sold it for an amazing price. And that's why, you know, it's like, oh, I was offered so much money. I couldn't say no. If anything, I sold it a little bit below market to be able to get the liquidity because I'm investing in other opportunities in other markets. Right. So it's not because this is inherently a bad investment. Actually, 
this is the person who bought it made a good investment for sure, but it's depending on that on that person's objective. So that person wants core real estate that will maintain its value over time. It's a bit of a wealth preservation move, having triple A real estate and just focusing on, on their other stuff. When I made this investment in 2016, I was working full time. I was on the executive board of Nestle in West Africa, working 60, 70 hours a week. I just didn't have much time. And then I would, you know, when I had my vacation, I just flew down here and in one week I bought an apartment. So that, that's how it all happened. Because I was so busy with my career, this sort of investment was perfect because it was triple A. I knew I wasn't making a mistake by buying in this, in this building, this apartment, in this neighborhood. I knew that it would be stable and I would over time make some decent capital gains. So that was my thinking then. And for my circumstances at that point in time, it was perfect. My circumstances have changed. So now I'm a full time investor and I look for very specific opportunities. And I have found in Latin America opportunities that I feel give me more cash flow, more immediate cash flow that's higher. And that has the potential for more capital gains, though with higher risk. But again, I'm at a stage in my life where I can tolerate high risk by going into such markets as Colombia and Mexico and others. But if I were to make a real estate investment right now in Europe, and if I wanted something for the, the long term, some quality investment, I would essentially buy this own apartment for myself again. <laughs> um, I can't think of any better city than Budapest in Europe at this stage in terms of, in terms of value. Um, look at any European capital and see what 3000 euros a square meter will get you. It doesn't get you much anywhere. Um, you know, even Slovakia is more expensive. So this here and Prague is at least two times more expensive than, than Budapest. So overall, in terms of value, Budapest has it. It's just that in Europe, Generally, from a macro point of view, I don't see any immediate capital gains. So that's one. And two, the rental yield was reasonable and very safe. Um, but again, I now manage my investments full time. It's my job managing my money so I can get more alpha somewhere else. Essentially, that's the whole reasoning. So Benedek here is my buyer's agent. How's the market doing right now in Budapest? Oh, well, the market is very interesting right now in Budapest. It has been in decline for, I think, approximately nine months. So this naturally gives good opportunities for new investors in the market. It really depends on what someone is aiming for. Like you mentioned, you, for your circumstances, this investment initially was a perfect one, but your circumstances have changed. I have been in talks with a lot of investors lately, and I see uh, a, a trend that uh, they are trying to invest into Budapest for capital preservation, like you said, and these kind of properties are perfect for that. Um, there is an influx of properties right now into the market and the prices vary on a, on a, on a, on a great scale. So I have seen a lot of incredibly underpriced um, properties right now. I still see a lot of uh, overpriced properties. So right now, if anybody has cash, uh, it's a good hunting ground for giving low ball offers and hoping someone would, would accept it without any second thought. Some people are in, in a big need for, for liquidity right now because of other recession uh, related issues. So I would say this is a very opportunistic market right now. Price discovery is essentially searching itself in the market. Like you said, pricing is a bit all over. I made a point of pricing the apartment a little bit below the market price, but then I, I was very firm on the negotiations because what you're seeing with your clients is depending on the apartments, people are getting discounts of five. Well, to five 10. to 10% is standard, I would say, but yeah. uh, if someone is a bit more courageous, we can even try up to 15%. Yeah, um, I sold mine 1% below the price I was asking for. Um, because I, I priced it in a way that I caught a lot of eyeballs. I constantly had visits here. So poor Ulash, my tenant, had to deal with <laughs> all the visits from all the agents. But then people were trying to throw low balls, but I knew that my pricing was just, just slightly below the market price and that someone would go for it. Boom, someone went for it with just a 1% discount. 
they made a good deal. I'm happy. I have the liquidity. I'm out of here. But if I were to make an investment in, in Europe, it would be, again, Budapest. And, and I wouldn't necessarily buy this sort of apartment for my objectives because you were showing me some of the potential projects you have. And they're more they're more active projects where you need to put more effort into it instead of just buying a, a nice apartment, you know, renovating it, putting on the long term market where it's it's a bit more active. And so you were you showed me two projects. Yep. So one project was Can you elaborate on the one in the first district? Roughly? Yeah, of course. So there is a very specific type of investment in Budapest, which is I don't think is very well known for foreigners. It is that we have a lot of historic buildings with low height and um, the building community is selling off the rooftop area of the of these buildings for a, for a reduced price, basically. And then the investor can um, basically turn it into a new level of of building with multiple apartments and then you can either resell it or you can rent it either for short or long term but in any cases these apartments will be newly built apartments but still on the top of historical buildings so it has some sort of the, the good things from both words basically so it is a very interesting opportunity for someone who is not afraid to to try new things for a high potential return and, and then there's this other apartment you showed me that it was really cheap You could cut it into like three apartments. Actually, four. Four. Yeah. yeah. So, so 76 square meters to be chopped into four mini apartments for yeah. Airbnb, right? Yeah, we have a different separate video on this topic, but we are still doing a lot of this kind of investment because it is the it's sort of on the safe side still because you have the property, you are just renting it for short term, you are just dividing the space into smaller units, which in any cases could be used in, even if it's not for the short term. You just rent it to students and uh, being small spaces, you will the, the rental prices will add up anyways. So it is a bit more creative kind of investment, but for those who, who look for, for higher yield. These kind of investments are a easily able to, to generate more yield than the typical short-term rental investment. So whereas the typical short-term rental investment in Budapest yields between 6 and 8 percent, these kind of uh, subdividing um, apartments, these are easily able to do between 8 and 12 percent, depending on the actual project. Net. Net. Yeah, yeah that net. is after expenses. Yeah, net. Um, 8 to 12 percent is doable just, in Budapest. The, the downside of this is that it's not as liquid. Yeah. Although I don't see a lot of people selling these kind of properties, so it might just be the reason because they are good investments. People are not trying to sell them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. Essentially, you know, I'm I'm sad to have sold this property because it was, uh, I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, you know, life things change, people's circumstances change, and you know, I had to make a decision. I could see something that was a better fit for me somewhere else. And also, when you have a market that is going down slowly like here in Hungary it's not like prices are crashing or anything they're going down a bit and which is why if you come with cash there are opportunities and you're trying to sell because I've made that mistake before of having real estate in in down markets just try to anticipate the market don't don't try to chase it down if you want to sell just understand that the market's going down a bit price it a little bit even below make sure it goes in a few weeks um, and then you're done Because um, like when you're trying to play to, you know, try to get the, the, the extra three, four percent, that's that's when you get played because then suddenly the market drops more and then you're just chasing it. So you need to understand, do you want to exit? Yes or no. If you want to exit, then you need to price accordingly. If I were to come back in Budapest, which I will, I still have positions here in Budapest. I haven't sold everything to be clear. I would like to come back to Budapest in the future, invest more here. But when I do invest here, if I'm, if I'll still be doing what I'm doing, which is being a full-time investor, I'll be speaking to someone like Benedek, who's actively looking for specific deals for investors. So, so you act as a buyer's agent, which is rare in Hungary. In Hungary, you just deal with like normal real estate agents who just try to sell whatever they have on their books and who'll just talk nonsense to sell what they're what they have to sell. So Benedek works differently. He charges money, but then he's representing your interests and he is going around and scouting specifically for 
deals. Um, so essentially, I mean, your, your fee is essentially immediately offset in that yep. foreigners who come here and don't have the time to be here for a few weeks, they can come here and someone's done the proper due diligence. You know, you're not going to be overpaying and generally you're going to be actually be getting a better deal than average. Um, so the, the few percentage points that you ask in terms of fees, generally are immediately offset. And even in terms of the, the rental yield, you're able to get higher rental yields because yep. you do management as well. Yes, that's right. I am also helping with the price negotiation with my clients. And generally we offset my charges immediately with the purchase of the property, which is, I am usually able to, to push the price more than my service cost. So. And you have a renovation company. So then yep. it's not like a real estate agent telling you, oh yes, you need to renovate this, uh, this apartment it'll cost you 600 euros a square meter. And then actually when you start getting quotes, oh, it's a thousand euros a square meter. Um, so when you're working with someone like Benedict, you're getting the right type of properties. Immediately, he can essentially quote you on the renovation works because that's what he's doing. He can do all of the ROI calculations and then he's got to deliver because he can do the management as well in the end, uh, him or one of his close partners. So it's like really, key in hand um, investments. So when I come back, I'll be using your services. You're very welcome to do so. Cool. All right. So if you're interested in finding out more about the Budapest real estate market, I wrote a whole article. There's a link in the description. Where I go into the neighborhoods, etc., cetera, um, where to invest, where not to invest. And also, if you want to get in touch with Benedek, there's a link below with more information on his services. All right, Benedek, thank you very much. Me too. You can go to my website, thewanderinginvestor.com and sign up to the private list. It's entirely free. This way you will be getting insider information as I travel around the world looking for opportunities. Lastly, feel free to follow me on Instagram at The Wandering Investor. I look forward to hearing from you.